Yeah, there's no idea. Yes, I'm drinking the other slowly. Check if there's audio now. Yeah, it's on. Music. The next one says, the way to grow your faith is by meditating on the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing. Romans uh, 10, verse 17. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, and uh, someone said that when we start meditating on the word of God, it diverts our attention from ourselves. It diverts it back to God. So when you are not feeling well and you take a scripture that says that, by his stripes I'm healed. Now, it divides your attention from you to that stripes of Christ, that work of Christ that was done on our behalf. So it's, it, 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 and it, it, it births faith in us. It births faith in us. So it is, it is, it, it, it's a way to, to grow our faith. So let's, uh, let's move on. Um, next, the next one says, knowledge and understanding of God's word comes by the spirit in the place of meditation. And like it's been said, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And we know what God did. God actually just encoded a message in this letter because you need the spirit of God to decode it. So if anybody picks it up and says, oh, I'm a PhD of theology, and you're not a born-again Christian, you can't unlock what is in the word of God. Understand. So be, what you would just have is knowledge. And knowledge is basically knowledge that does not produce insight is useless. Knowledge is everywhere. On the internet, you can you can Google everything. You understand? You can even Google how to do surgery. But can you do that surgery? Do you do, do we get what we're saying? So it's and yeah, so let's uh let's let's move on. That it, the letter kills, but it's the spirit that actually brings this uh these things to life. Psalms 19 verse. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Amen. Amen. Testimony, it makes wise what? The simple. And you know, even the people that brandish themselves as being wise, and when they make some decisions, you look at them and say, ah, why do you get some strength? But here he's saying that even a simple person, that means a foolish person, if someone with a simple mind, when you take the word of God and you interact with the word of God, something is created. A wise person comes out. And that's when people say, wow, this knowledge, this insight, this wisdom cannot have come but by the spirit of God. And that is the way as Christians, we cannot live in this world and operate at the same level with people of the world. And that's why we need to rely on that intelligence, which is the, the mind of Christ, so that we can, so that, so that when we make some decisions, People might say, oh, it doesn't make sense. But when the whole thing pans out, they will now say, oh, this is God. And, and you know, and like, like, like the Bible says, our light would shine. And people would what? They would give thanks to, to our Father that is in heaven. If anyone has, question, has any questions, you can, you, can, you can direct me. Okay, so, now, I'll, I'll continue. It says, it is a means of better knowing understanding the word which gives insight to life itself. So that means there is an insight to life. And when we look at it, if, if you drive a BMW, you say, oh, I know my BMW. But you know that when you go to the dealership, the level of knowledge they have 
is different from the level of. And when you now go to the engineer that actually fabricated that engine, do you understand what I'm saying? It is another ball game. That's why you will know that your car is actually maybe transmitting some signals somewhere and you are just driving it around. Do you get what we're saying? So there is an insight to life and it can only come from the creator of that life. And that's when, when people say that, oh, life just came into existence by a big... You have already defeated yourself because then there is, there is an uncertainty. Where do you go back to when there's a problem? You understand? So he's saying that there is an insight to life. Pray the Lord would expound all these scriptures in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Now, Psalms 119 verse 27 says, Make me to understand the ways of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous work. You understand? So even for us to be able to even understand, that's why a lot of people just look at what you, when you look at the world itself, the creation, you understand? What it should normally do for you is it should make you praise God. Do you get what we're saying? But the thing is, that cannot happen when you don't have the Spirit of God. That cannot have happen when you don't have the Spirit of God. Okay, so let's move to the next point. It says that it creates spiritual stability and fruitfulness or success according to biblical standard. So now, I, I think I, I, I like the biblical standards that is actually attended to that because there is success and there is success. You understand? There is success according to the world standard and there is success according to the standard of God. Uh, the, we, we are constrained by the law that says do not lie. So I cannot lie to be successful. I cannot cheat to be successful. But people of the world might lie to be successful, might cheat to be successful. So he's saying here that he creates success according to the standard of God. Joshua 1 verse 7. Strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law that your servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful in whatever you do. And Psalms 1, our text, Psalms 1, 2 to 3, the later part of it says that you shall be planted as a tree by the rivers of living water, of waters that bringeth forth fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever it does. And I, I'm here to state that that whatsoever means whatsoever it does shall be prosper, shall prosper. And Psalms 119, verse 78. Okay. Psalm 119. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, that I will meditate in thy precepts. Amen. Amen. I would meditate in thy precepts says that in the times of trial and persecution, meditating on God's word gives peace and shines light. Now, well, when I was thinking about this, what came to my mind is, is an image of an oak tree. No matter the storm, what an oak tree does is it just what? It shakes its branches. When the storm goes, it's still what? It's still there. So as there is a storm growing through the world now, if you are actually doing this. You will be grounded. You understand? Even when you feel the effect of the storm. Because the tree is actually feeling the effect. But there is a root that holds. There is something. There is a stability that. There is a root that holds that tree. Which is us in Christ. You, 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 we get what, what we are saying. So. We get what we are saying. Um, the part, I wanted to add also that. When. The importance of meditation. Is, is, is very necessary for us to be stable in our Christian walk. Because when the devil came to tempt Jesus, he also used the word. The difference between the devil and Jesus is, is a lot of things. But the, the difference then was Jesus was able to apply the word. Jesus was able to use it in context. Because when the devil quoted um, Psalms 91, that he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, in their hands they will bury up so you don't dash your foot against the stone. It, it, is, it is right there in the scripture. But Jesus used another scripture to, to confront him, to, to almost like discard what he said. So w when it comes to um, reading the Bible, 
There are levels to it. Meditation is where you know what God is saying concerning a situation. Meditation is where you know what God is saying concerning your life, concerning what is happening, so that even when the devil brings the Bible to you and tries to quote it, because of how stable you are in the word and because of how much of the word is not just sitting, but deeply rooted inside of you, you are able to use the word to speak against whatever plan the enemy is having. Um, the other thing is that when the scripture says, when everyone is saying there's a casting down, you'll be saying there's a lifting up. When you think about it logically, it doesn't make any sense because if the world is saying there's a casting down, it means that there is a casting down. But by reason of the word deeply rooted in you and by reason of you meditating on the word, you're able to see what others cannot see. You're able to declare what others are not able to declare. You're able to turn things around because it's by reason of the word that the world was created. That was how God created the heavens and the earth. And so meditating on the word gives you ammunition against the devil and makes you very stable um, in all your endeavors in life. Amen. So the next one here says meditation is the key to inspiration. And I, I especially like this one. It says the Bible is God's breath. Is, is God is God's breath is God breathed, and each word and sentence has a purpose and a heart. Now, uh, the, the, the the verse there is Psalms one one nine verse ninety nine, where David says, "I have more understanding than all of my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation." You know, this is one key, very great benefit of uh, of meditation, is you know, they, you know, there are instances when Somebody is actually maybe telling you a problem. But because of the state of your mind, you are seeing something different. Somebody is actually coming to tell you, oh, I have this problem. But you are seeing an idea. You are seeing an application because of the state of the mind. That was what uh, David was saying here. He says that I meditate on the word of God. So when a rabbi stands and is giving me the knowledge, you understand? When I take the knowledge and mix it with the state of my mind, what happens? I have an experience of God that even the rabbi is not having. That's what David was actually telling you. I have an understanding. Understanding is different from knowledge. He's saying, because of what I have meditated, because of what is my meditation, when you give me an information, what, the way I process it, what comes out of it, is way different from you that you're actually providing the information. So that's what uh, David was saying here. And it's, it's you know, there's... And a, a, a perfect example, not a, well, an example is like the people that founded Google. They were actually doing a PhD and they had a supervisor that was doing their PhD, you understand? But this supervisor did not know that what they were working on would change the world. Because if he knew, he would have implemented it, you understand? So in some areas, they had their mind well developed. So as they were taking in the information, they were able to create something that is now of benefit to the world. So in the space of God, when we meditate on the word of God, even when an information is, is sent to us, what is what comes out of it is an experience of God. Okay, someone has a question. Yes, ma'am. Just wanted to add to that Psalm, verse 3 of Psalms 1. Um, it says, and I want to read it in the New Living Translation. They are like those who meditate. They are like trees planted along the river bank, bearing fruit every season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. Um, seasons, no, no trees last all seasons. Like, fruits don't come in every season. But the Bible is saying that those who meditate would bear fruit every season. We know that when winter is coming, during the fall, trees shed their leaves so that they can preserve, you know, um, themselves for winter. So that, and by springtime, they start coming out, the leaves start coming out again in preparation for fruitfulness. But a Christian that is with God is not like that, someone who meditates. So it's not a seasonal thing. When everything is dry, when we're in this kind of season that we're in right now, this is how you know someone who is really, you know, um, how will I say it? Who is really grounded in Christ and people who are not. 
um, what we do at this season will determine who we, whether we're still bearing fruit or we're just, you know, running after all, all, all over the place like everybody else. So meditation is what gives us that, that stability, not just stability, fruitfulness in all season. And Brad Tyron was talking about, you know, thing, moving. Meditation is that word of God moving from our head to our heart, to our spirit, and then it's de disseminated to the whole body. So we, it becomes what we used to. That's what helps us to live life the way God wants us to live it. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Thank you very much. So if, if anyone has any other... Thank you, thank you very much, for that. So now the next one is okay. How do we? What is medi How do we do it? You know, because there are different. <laughs> the world has a version of you understand of meditation. Where I walk, see some people sit in the sun and they do one. You understand? And they say it's a form of meditation. But what we are talking about is actually taking the word of God. And so this, this outline B is talking about how do we go about it. And, and we can, because it, it's, an, it's an ancient heart that was given to man by God. We can rely on the data that comes from this Bible on how to do it. So the first one here says, biblical meditation is the act of reflection and pondering and going over the word, the word of God in one's mind. You ponder, you reflect. You go over it in our mind. You go over it in our mind. Uh, it says, okay, it says, you select a quiet place. There is a stillness of your mind. You cannot be thinking of too many things, and you cannot be thinking of other things and saying you want to meditate. You, you cannot be thinking about what you will eat, what clothes you will hear, and say, oh, I'm meditating. There has to be that stillness. There has to be that singular purpose of something that is being done. It says that you find a, a solitude place for meditating on God's word. So we, we are talking about the environment now. The environment. Now, in the, the B part says, there are three times during the day we can actively turn our minds over to God's word in Christian meditation. At bedtime, just before one falls asleep. Falls asleep. May God's word be the last thing that occupies your mind. And I want to put it out there that people of the world actually employ this thing. They actually employ this thing because they want to, they, they know that it works. Psalms 4 verse 4. If anyone is there, you can read. Oh, and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed. And be still and stop. Amen. I have Psalms 63 verse 6. It says, when I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. And you know, I want to just add something. It, the time before we sleep is the time we worry the most. Because when you lay down that you want to sleep, all those problems, those what? They come. And by the time you start meditating on them, you are reinforcing them. And when we wake up in the next morning, we say, oh, I'm having a bad morning. Or oh, my... So it's... it's, uh, it's, it's what we when we meditate on the word and we go to bed, when we come when we wake up in the morning, some, we, we so he's saying that bedtime is a good time to. Now the second point says at waking time, one can start the day meditating on a portion of God's word. At waking time, uh, Genesis nineteen verse twenty seven, Genesis nineteen twenty seven, and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Uh, Luke 21, verse 38 says, And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him. But the third, verse 37 of that scripture was saying that, it says, Jesus always goes to the top of Mount Olive. What he goes to do there? He goes to meditate on the word, pray. Then he will come down and people will, people will hear him. It says, thirdly, you can pick a specific time to set aside for Bible study and thinking on the word of God each day. And someone open uh, Genesis 24, verse 63. Genesis 24, 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming up. Amen. 
So we can see that this was a routine for what? For Isaac. It says he went out to what? To meditate. So we, we, we see this reoccurring in the fathers of faith. We see this reoccurring. So it is, it is, it is something we should imbibe as Christians. Now, this, the, the other one here says, you select a verse or two and reflect on it over in your mind. And I have Joshua 1.7 that says, only be strong and very courageous that ye may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left that, they, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So here he's saying that Pick a verse or two. Because one thing is this. You must be able to recall it. So you can't say, oh, I want to meditate over the whole of Genesis or over the New Testament. You, you, you get it's, it's vast. So pick a subset that you want to you understand that you can take, you assimilate, and you can start thinking about it. And, and over time, you would, the, the spaces becomes bigger. You understand? Then you can say, okay, I want to meditate over the book of Luke because you know the aim. You know the context because you have started from picking. So pick if you want to meditate on the stripes of Christ or Psalm 91. You understand? Pick it. You, 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 something you can recall and you, you move on with that. Now it says, yeah, there are three things to do, which is the, the actions. It says, the first one, it says, it says, reading the Bible. Because if you don't know it, how can you meditate on it? The next one says, reflecting on what you have read. And the most important part is responding to it. Because meditation creates something. You just don't meditate in oblivion and nothing happens. There is a urge for an action. And that would be the next and the last part. The applications of meditation. So when you meditate, what happens? When you meditate, what happens? So let's, let's go on. It says, through meditation, we internalize God's word so that it, could, it would become personal and real in our daily work as Christians by answering the following questions. So I have here that meditation should produce actions, decisions, prayers. Because the thing is, when you meditate to a point and you find out that you are inherently limited, what do you do? You call on the God that is what? That is limitless. You understand? So meditation, so the first one here says, how does this truth apply to my life in all spheres? That is my family, my work, my church, my neighborhood, even for me. It says, how does this apply? And we have uh, Matthew 7, 1 to 5, that was talking about judge not. That if you judge, the same measure shall be met on, on you. It says, how can your brother, let me just read the, the, the fourth. It says, how will thou say to your brother, let me pull out the moat of thine eyes, and behold, a beam is in thy own height, thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thy eyes, then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat of your brother's eye. So this is a thought from God. This is an intelligence from God. So when you pick this and you meditate, then you look at it, how do I apply this to my life. So, the way I would apply it, which I have in my note here, is when I hear in a greater magnitude in an area compared to you, but it is not, you don't know it, I will not call you out because I have to first deal with myself. before you. So, that's what it's saying because moats and beam, they are both wood, but they are different in sizes. So, if I have... God forbid, if I have 10 girlfriends and you have one and I now call you out, call you on the pulpit and lambast you because mine is not known. That is what he's saying here. He says, deal with your own self first. So we can see it, it's a practical application. And that's the way the word of God is. When we read it, it should, we should look at it and how do we apply. Someone says something that when you study the Bible, you should have some to-do list that comes out of that study, or else it's just being an, uh, an activity in knowledge. Yeah, I think like, like that you said in Matthew 7, 1 to 5, I think, I think the, 
Jesus Christ is really taking his time to really make it make us understand that this thing what this thing is he's talking to you. You understand? It's it's not so much about what other people are doing and maybe you read the word of God and what this person or this person is who has broken this thing. No, it's he's trying to enforce it that this thing is really you. He's trying to tell you that this thing should change you. You understand? Because if you're not meditating on the word of God, you will, and you are waiting for somebody else to keep you from that own meditation. A lot of sometimes their own meditations might be skewed by error or their, by their own opinions and all that. But when you meditate on the word of God, one of the things that come out of one of the ways you respond to it is that a lot of times it causes you to repent. You understand? Because when you take it in and you find out, oh, Jesus, oh, God is not all about love. He's also a God that judges. And then, oh, he tells you that, oh, this thing was not only written to me, but written and for me. Oh, and I was there thinking, you know, but because you have pondered on it and all that, it causes, like we said, but it, it changes you. If you are not, if there's, if you're not experiencing a change in your life and on this narrow path that we are all walking on to heaven, if you, it's, it's a true meditation that you realize, you find out that, hey, I'm carrying an extra load. Oh, this thing, this presumption or assumption I've always had about this thing that I've been doing, oh, it's been wrong. You understand? And then you change it and then you drop weights and then you drop things. But if you go through life and you, are, you don't, you take this, like we have been talking now, meditation, it sounds like you've heard about this all the time and they're just keep going meditation. You mean, but if you don't take it seriously, if you don't take, like Jesus Christ said, take heed unto yourself. Not take heed unto somebody or something. He says, take heed unto yourself. Meaning, be cautious, be careful, you understand? And it's in the word of God that you read, that you take that caution. And you begin, you understand, you are taking it, you are changing. It's changing you. It's converting you. Otherwise, you might end up thinking you are here. And all the while, you are dead. You understand? And it might be too late to turn back. So that's why this, as we say, meditation is something that we should take to heart. It's something that we should begin to do on a daily basis, like we said, in the morning. In the evening. It's something that you have to take it. And as you read it, as you take it, your to-do list change as you see it change we talk about abraham when god tells him to do something almost every time you read it you hear him say early in, before people rose early in the morning he went and took his son and passed um, them to the desert early in the morning he went out and you find out that he was always he acted immediately he took it over in the morning he had made an action so i just want us to make sure that we should not just take this meditation thing as just uh, read, study deep, and all that. We should make sure that in, the, in our own way, in, our, in the way by the help of the Holy Spirit, we are spending our own time in stillness, like we said, to take in the word of God and make sure that you and God's word are in tune. Praise the Lord. So the next point here says, in view of this truth, like what we've said, what can I change? And we have Hebrews 4, 12 here. It says the word of God is what? It's quick. It's powerful. It's sharp. It's piercing even the soul. Dividing the soul and the spirit. Nobody knows the points of the division, but the word of God knows it. Do you understand? So you can know whether the intent of your heart is covetousness or, you understand, or being zealous for God. The word of God does that. So he's saying that, like what my brother has said, change. That is the most, that is, after all has been said and done, we should make sure that what we should change. Then the next one here says, how do I carry out this change? And, uh, I have James 1, 5 to 6. It says, if anybody lacks wisdom, what should the person do? You should ask. And that's where prayer comes, you understand? So if I'm supposed to make a change and I can't find the which I most times would you won't even have the strength to do it. And that's when you have you go to God and you pray and He provides what? He supplies the grace for for that change to happen. So the, the, the last one says the major hindrances to meditation is the first one, noise. Noise. Some people cannot just sit still. And we a lot of our brains are being rewired now. I if people sit still, after a minute or two, what happens? You are looking for your phone. You, because you just want to do something. You want an activity. But meditation, you need, it, it has to be a quiet place. The next one says, Ori. Ori. 
fast food versus homemade food. I will take you 45 minutes compared to a drive-by. You understand? But we know that when you sit down and you meditate on the word of God, what happens? It becomes yours. It becomes yours. So it's good to listen to messages. Yes. But the thing is this. If you don't meditate on that word, like Pastor will always say, it's an information. You understand? When you meditate, that is when it comes into your spirit and it becomes your own. It becomes your own. The next one here says crowd. And you know, my generation, we, we, can, we don't want to be alone. We just, and that's why people are saying social distancing. Let's all, we want to, everybody wants to, 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 to fellowship and interact with others. But this thing is a, is a solitude thing. It's a one person thing. I can't sit down with my wife and say, let's meditate on Psalms 1. You understand? <laughs> because it has to be, you are the one taking it in. You are the one taking it in. So I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I'll read, um, does anyone have? Okay. I'll read the conclusion now. It says, one important thing the Bible tells us to do is to think about God's word. Our thoughts determine our behavior, which is very key. When you see that I am behaving in a certain way, you should look at what you're thinking about. So that we can, we, we know it is very important. And Philippians 4, verse 8 says, finally, brethren, whatever is what? True, whatever is honest, whatever is just, pure, lovely, things of good report, if it be any virtue, and if it be any praise, meditate, think upon these things. So we can see the Bible giving us a clear instruction to think over these things. And it gave us a boundary of what to think about. Meditation, this is from Bruce Demaret. It says, meditation refocuses us from ourselves and from the world so that we can reflect on God's word, his nature, his abilities, his works. The goal is simply to permit the Holy Spirit to activate the life-given word of God. So we, we can see that we cannot have a successful Christian life without this spiritual exercise. So pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father Lord, we thank you for bringing us to this place again, my Lord. We thank you, Father Lord, for even your word is introductory. Father Lord, you have told us even today that we should meditate. Father Lord, you have said it is your duty. Lord, Father Lord, that even as we have heard your word, you may help us not just to hear, but to be doers. In every way, O oh Lord, that you can cause a man to be still, to take in your word, to feed from your word, and to be changed, and to be transformed. Father Lord, I pray that you will give to each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, you know the state of every man. You know where they are even in this journey of life, even in this journey of salvation. Father Lord, I pray that for each and every one of us, even as we open our Bibles, even as we think on your precepts, Father Lord, I pray, oh God, that at your mercy, you will speak to us. We will not just study and run off with our own vain tongues, but Father, by your spirit, you will order our steps in the way of righteousness, in the name of Jesus. Whatever thing we need to leave behind, whatever thing that needs to go, give us the boldness and the courage to let go. Whatever attitude, whatever the mind of Christ that we need to imbibe, Father Lord, set our hearts and prepare it to take that in and to be changed in the name of Jesus. As we have heard, O oh Lord, Father Lord, I pray that you do not stand against us in the day of judgment, Father Lord, but even as we have heard, the grace to be doers, the grace.